to understand how referred visceral pain can actually be manifested and make us actually feel pain when the organs are in pain, we need to return to the spinal nerve. So right here, we're going to illustrate what we have at the T, let's pick a dermatome at random, let's say T4. So we've got our T4 dermatome. And let's just pretend somebody pokes me with a pin in my T4 dermatome. And ouch. So I felt that. It's somatic pain, well localized, pinpoint discrimination. So those sensory axons that are conveying that painful sensation are coming back along the anterior ramus, going on to the posterior root, and because they're sensory, they're going to have their pseudo-unipolar cell bodies. They're in the posterior or dorsal root ganglion. They're going to then have their other side of the axon stretching over here to the posterior horn of the spinal cord, where they will synapse with their second order neurons, which, because this is pain, is going to cross over the white anterior commissure and head upwards through the anterolateral system or the spinal thalamic tract and that is what's going to tell my brain that something just hurt me. Ouch! So we've got that sensation there. Now the heart receives its sympathetic innervation from roughly the T1 to T5 sympathetic nerves. Those are coming from the intermedial lateral cell column. So here, preganglionic sympathetics are going to be traveling through the anterior root into the spinal nerve. They're going to jump onto a white ramus communicans. And in the case of the heart, they'll synapse in here. And then the cardiopulmonary splanchnic nerves will take the sympathetics to the heart. Now I only bring that up because when we have pain occurring in the heart, so we'll have something painful happen, some ischemia, a myocardial infarction, or something along those lines, the sensory nerves from the heart, the visceral pain conveying nerves, are going to piggyback on these sympathetics, but going backwards. So they're going to follow them into their cardiopulmonary splanchnic nerve, and if it's a different organ, a different type of splanchnic nerve, it's sensory, so it's not going to synapse in the paravertebral ganglion of the sympathetic chain. It'll go through the white ramus communicans, join the spinal nerve, and because it's sensory, it's going to follow the posterior root, and it has its own pseudo-unipolar cell body there in the posterior root ganglia, comes into the posterior horn, parallel to those somatic pain uh, fibers that we saw a minute ago, and will synapse with its own second order neuron here in the posterior horn, which will follow the anterior commissure there up to the brain, and it's going to let my brain know that the heart is in pain. But this visceral sensation is not sensed consciously. So even though the heart is in pain, all I feel is, well, really nothing. I'm not going to feel any sensation based on the pain in the heart consciously. Now, if this were all there was to it, our organs could be in horrible, horrible distress, and we'd never know about it because we have two totally separate systems. And yet, pain from the heart can manifest as crushing substernal chest pain, pain down the left arm, or even on the forehead and neck area. So what's going on there? What's going on is that there's a little bit of crosstalk happening where these neurons are running parallel to each other in the posterior horn. So we're going to zoom in on this area right here and see what's happening. In our zoomed in posterior horn here, we have gray cells and we're going to have somatic pain axons coming in and they're going to synapse with their second order neurons in this chain and they are going to stimulate them to fire and tell our brain by the anterolateral system that something's going wrong with, we said, my T4 dermatome. And because that's somatic, I know it's happening, so my brain lets me respond to it. Just like before, we have from our heart in this case, but it could be other organs as well, have the same thing going on at different levels of the spinal cord, visceral sensory pain axons coming in, stimulating their second order neurons and they will then travel through the anterolateral system as well 
and tell my brain, but not my conscious mind, that something's going on and it's hurt. It's, it's not pleasant. Now, if that was it, again, we wouldn't have any real way to know that the organs are in trouble. But, in a way, thankfully, some collateral axons jump off of these visceral fibers and make some diffuse occasional branches over to the second order somatic neurons and they will stimulate them. Now the important thing to remember is there's no input necessarily coming from my T4 dermatome into here causing this second order somatic nerve to fire but that input from my heart coming in and triggering it my brain doesn't know the difference. All it knows is that second order neuron is firing and therefore it's going to sense pain in my T4 dermatome and again the heart can trigger that same thing to happen. Now these connections are not necessarily as strong or as constant but as they occur throughout the T1 to roughly T5 levels of the spinal cord we will get some response and that's why we're going to have referred pain from the organs visceral referred pain be poorly localized and diffuse. It doesn't really exist in a single spot like somatic pain would, but it's going to be in a broad area but can be a nice sign that we have a problem with the organs and we can intercede before it becomes fatal. Now that we've seen the neurologic basis for visceral referred pain in the posterior horn of the spinal cord, let's actually put it to work. So if we have a problem with the heart we're going to tend to have those signs manifesting in the T1 to T5 dermatomes. Now I want to note that does not mean the entire T1 to T5 dermatome is going to be affected. In fact, there tend to be areas that are more affected than others in the classic presentation of a visceral referred pain pattern from the heart will be substernal chest pain possibly radiating down the left arm but it's important to know that because the sympathetic chain stretches up into the neck and some of those fibers that go to the heart actually come up from T1 go through the chain and then descend there can also be some referred pain into the forehead the orbital area even the shoulder and you can even have some occasional pain in the jaw area, the neck as well. So anywhere from T1 to T5 could be a source for referred visceral pain from the heart. When we get to some other organs, the stomach is getting its sympathetic innervation from the T5 to T9 levels of the spinal cord. And so when visceral pain axons follow those sympathetics backward, they're going to tend to activate those as well. Now, once again, it's not that every single dermatome from T5 to T9 will be affected, the stomach tends to affect a strip like this primarily on the left side, whereas the liver and gallbladder tend to affect a strip similarly on the right side. Now one odd thing about the gallbladder is it's very close to the diaphragm. The diaphragm is innervated by the phrenic nerve, which comes from C3, C4, and C5. And if that inflamed, irritable gallbladder touches the diaphragm, it can actually cause referred pain to the C3, C4 dermatomes, sometimes manifesting as a right shoulder pain. So just be aware the gallbladder can sometimes do something a little weird and refer pain up to the C4 area here at the tip of the shoulder. One that we're all probably sadly familiar with is going to be when we have abdominal cramping. So our small intestine is going to tend to refer to this T9 to T11 region and we'll have diffuse, poorly localized pain in our abdomen. If you are unlucky enough to have abdominal cramps going on, you'll notice that they're not in a single spot, they're in a diffuse area. And that's going to be one of the hallmarks of referred visceral pain. And the large intestine, being large, refers to an even greater area, and it's not uncommon to have both of them involved when you have some irritation of the intestines. Now last and certainly not least for this tour of quick refer pain patterns is going to be the pancreas. The pancreas gives us very few signs that it's gone bad or it has a problem and it can manifest from T5 to T11 either in the front but also in the back of the body and if anyone comes in uh, complaining of poorly localized pain in the back or abdominal region with loss of weight that wasn't uh, deliberate you should definitely have pancreatic uh, pathology on your differentials because it doesn't give you many opportunities to intercede before it becomes very bad.